In this video, I will be teaching you how to graph trigonometric functions. When we have trigonometric functions, they're usually denoted in the form y is equal to a times sine of b of x plus c. And this obviously works for cosine and tangent as well. Now I'm going to take this step by step. So I'll first show you how plus c affects it, then how a, and then how b affects our graphs. So let's say, for example, that we have y is equal to sine of x minus 1. So minus 1 is essentially our plus c. When we draw the graphs of trigonometric functions, what we want to do is we want to take it step by step. So by this I mean that we will first draw the graph of sine x, and then we'll draw the graph of the whole entire thing. So the graph of sine of x looks like this. It's our y-axis and our x-axis. So curve, this is 180 degrees, this is 360 degrees, 0, 90, 270, positive 1, minus 1. Now when we're subtracting 1 from this, what we're essentially doing is we're moving every point on our graph 1 lower. So for example, over here we have 0, this will become minus 1. Here we have 1, it'll become 0, 0, minus 1. <clears throat> uh, minus 1 will become minus 2 over here, minus 2, and then 0 will become minus 1 again. So our final graph should look like this. So it's essentially the same as our graph above, just move down 1. And if this were plus 1, then our graph would just be moved up by 1 point, like that. So that's simple enough. Plus C just means that you either move your graph up or down. Now, how does A affect our equation? So A. Let's say, for example, that we have the graph of, or we have to graph Y is equal to 2 times cosine of X. And the way that we do this is, once again, we want to take the step by step. So we'll start by drawing the graph of cosine of X. Here, axis. This is x, this is y. We'll look something like this. And this is 1, this is minus 1. This right here is 180 degrees, 90 degrees, 70 degrees, and 360 degrees. Now, what a does, so what this variable does is it stretches our graph. So this 2 is a factor by which we end up stretching our graph. And if you think about it, this right here is 1. So the point 1 times 2 is going to be 2. So let's say that 2 is up here. And this right here is 0. It'll stay 0. Down here where we have negative 1, it will become negative 2. So we extend that. Negative 2 will come down to here and then 0 will be 0 again, and 1 will come all the way up to 2. So we essentially have a stretch version of our graph, which looks something like this. Should change the color. So it will look like this. And we can erase the original graph. Now if this was 3, then our graph would go all the way up to 3, and then it would go somewhat like this. If it was 4, it would go up to 4 and pass through it like this and so on. Another thing I want to note about the variable in front of our trigonometric function is when it's negative or what is what happens when it is negative. So when the coefficient is negative, then that means that our graph is flipped. So let's say that we want to graph negative 2 cosine theta or cosine x that will essentially be a flipped version of our graph. So instead of 2, we'll have negative 2 down here. Instead of positive 2 over here, we'll have negative 2 over here as well. And instead of negative 2 over here, we will have positive 2. And zeros will stay the same. So that will look like this. And like that. So the coefficient a essentially stretches it, and when it's negative, it flips it. So let's actually write this up here. A 
stretches and flips. This essentially translates our graph. So basically this means that it moves it up and down. Now let's see how B affects what our graph looks like. Let's take the example of y is equal to sine of 2 times x. So 2 is our value for b. Now what b does is it changes the period. So b changes the period of our graph. So the new period will equal to the old period over b. And if you recall, the period is how long our graph takes to repeat itself. So in the case of sine, it's 360 degrees because that's how long it takes to do one loop. So as always, let's first draw our graph of y is equal to sine times x. This is 180 degrees. This here is 360 degrees. And then we have 90 and 270. So the period of sine is 360 degrees. So our new period is going to be equal to, so period is equal to 360 over our value of B, and our value of B happens to be two. So our period is 360 over two, which is equal to 180 degrees. So our sine curve will repeat itself every 180 degrees. So what does that mean? That basically means that this loop that we have over here will be complete in 180 degrees. So what we end up getting looks like this. So essentially after 180 degrees, which is right here, our graph has completed one loop and then by 360 degrees, it has completed two loops. So we can erase that. Now let's see what would happen if we were to take, let's say, y is equal to tan of 2x. So let's start out by drawing our graph of y is equal to tan of x. this okay and now we want to account for this too so the period for tan is equal to so the old period is equal to 180 degrees so over this is 90 this here is 270 degrees and the period of tan, so tan repeats itself by doing this loop thingy over every 180 degrees. Now our new period will be, it's our old period over B, so 180 degrees over two, which is equal to 90 degrees. So our tan graph will repeat itself after 90 degrees. So we essentially just like kind of shorten our graph. So here it's 90, over here instead we'll take 45 degrees. The graph will look like this. 90 degrees it'll go down. It'll look like this, going up. This should actually be a bit wider. And then it itself over here as well. So our period changed from 180 degrees to 90 degrees. Okay, so in our equation where we have y is equal to a times sine bx plus c, what b does is it changes the period of our graph period is equal to 
hold period over B.